Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Now I've just finished getting a nuclear power set up, so I'm, um, I've just plugged everything in. As you can see, you've got um, pumps providing water for the uh, for, for the uh, for the steam generator for the boilers, and um, the nuclear power uh, power plants themselves, hopefully providing heat. You can see the um, temperature gradually creeping up there on the on this one. It's almost at 600 degrees C. That's good, um, and each one is burning through the um, through the uh, what do you call it? Nuclear fuel cells uh, relatively relatively slowly. They um, they last for quite a while. Um, and you can see over here, there's a couple of dead ones that have been used up head heading away down there. You can tell they're dead because of the dark dark colour, and then these ones are all live going up here. So yes, this is all going um, going well so far. I've linked in through along this sort of single cable here. Hopefully, I've linked it up to the no, I ha <laughs> I haven't actually linked this up to the main factory. That's um, a bit of a mistake. Let's uh, let's scamper over and do that, or I'm just going to be wasting absolutely all of this power. Because one of the funny things about nuclear power that's a bit different to everything else, um, apart from the fact that I haven't actually finished building it yet, let's let the bots do that while we uh, while we get past, is that they always burn at the same rate. They always use up the fuel at the same rate, no matter how much power is being actually being produced by the um, by them. So at this point, it's all being produced, but it's not actually going anywhere. So I'll let myself in here. Have another look at the map. So <laughs> yeah, so th this this bit over here and this spur coming off across to here doesn't actually meet up with this spur that goes down to here and then through here and from there to absolutely everywhere else I hope yeah all the way yeah this isn't very well linked up so but if I if I bridge across here between these two or across here between these two then let's let's do that because at the moment as we can see if I click on this one which is where it goes off to the nuclear power plants I've got potential production of 400 megawatts from that. Accumulators are all fully charged, um, and I'm only using about one megawatt from there, which is a bit ridiculous. Come across here, link that to there. Now, <laughs> there we go. We've got um, potential production of 420 megawatt. Uh, sorry, 1.9 gigawatts. Although some of that might be the um, other, might be the solar or the accumulators. Uh, now we've got everything charged up, so we're, we're hardly, yeah, we're hardly using any of the power we're generating. So this is a little bit wasteful um, because we're generating enormous quantities of um, of nuclear power and then using practically none of it. Um, but that's a sort of a first stage. I can now stop putting down um, the solar panels everywhere because I don't need to worry about them anymore. Uh, it, all of the energy, all of the energy my base is going to use for. A, Good while is going to be produced by this system over here, by the by the uh, nuclear fuel being nuclear or uh, uranium ore being dug up here, nuclear fuel being produced and then passed over to here. And I didn't put a radar down over there; that was a mistake. Let's head back over there and talk about it a bit more. So there's been a few um, a few things I've done since the last episode. One of them is, is here. I've tidied this up a bit. So now now that I've got enough of the uh, 235 being generated. Um, just about. I've got it being unloaded from these um, centrifuges straight onto this belt here. It's then passed around up onto this one. This sorts it between the um, 235 and the 238 as before and this should be enough to keep the centrifuges running. They're, they're, they'll get re restocked by these uh, long-handled inserters as, as the uh, 235 goes past like that and then it gets, gets to this uh, splitter here and this is a priority to the right so it's going to by default, if there's if there's not enough to keep it full, it's going to pass it off to the right like this. Eventually, that can potentially back up to the point that it'll, um, it'll it won't be able to pass it through, and at that point, it'll spit it out onto this belt here. That one then goes around here, puts it onto the uh, left hand side here. So at this, so we've also got the two, three, five. Oh, I can get rid of these bo these boxes now. I don't need that anymore to replace it with a straight through belt. Uh, the two, three, two, three, eight is also being passed along here. And what is and the the amount any that doesn't get turned into ammunition is then passed onto this belt here, and then round here to this these machines, which are making the actual fuel cells out of iron and the two types of uranium. They go down the belt over here, all the way down here. And are then fed in through to these um, to the uh, nuclear power, nuclear reactors, and they do get used up. Very, they get used up, but very very slowly. They take quite a long time to go through. So by the time I've um, by the time I've got through the all of these, there'll be plenty more available. They um, 
nuclear reactors. So nuclear reactors are quite complicated. They produce a certain amount of power just inherently, just from from having a single one running and fueled and so on. But if they, but they have a what they call an, a um, a neighbor bonus. So if they're up touching another nuclear reactor, then that'll double the amount of power they're producing. If they're touching two, it'll triple it. If they're touching three, it'll quadruple it. Yes, that's right. So it's basically the number it's touching um, plus itself uh, is, 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 is a multiplier in there. And from there, you can then feed it out using these heat pipes, which are currently at about a thousand, almost a thousand degrees C, so that's good. Um, and then you've got the uh, heat exchangers here that turn the uh, turn the water into steam at a jillion degrees, uh, 500 degrees C apparently, so there's a little bit of loss in there. Um, and you then feed that through these turbines which will then produce power. And that's all great. Um, there's a slight problem, if you want to call it that, with this, that um, at the moment, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm wasting virtually all of the energy they're producing because my um, solar is basically producing enough to keep the whole base running but now i can go back over here i can turn these back on and not worry about the amount of power they produce and i can build another one of these drills maybe maybe another two of them it'll it'll reduce the effectiveness of them a little bit but but i'll still get more out than i'm um, than i would if i had fewer and i don't need to worry about power anymore in the long run i'd like to be, be able to keep building these up in pairs sort of forever upwards but the um that actually takes up a bit more space, a bit more than I've used here. So what I've got here is for each one of these reactors, I've got 12 uh, heat exchangers and then 20 steam turbines. And that's the correct ratio for when you've got them in a cluster of four like that. If you have more, then the ones in the middle need, I think it's 16 heat exchangers and then the 24 um, turbine, so it's going to get even bigger. I might, um, I'm also, it's also gets a bit trickier to wind the water in for each one as well. So, um, my plan for now is to just have a four reactor um, system here, and then maybe make another one, and then see, see how it goes. When I start to run out of power, then I'll worry about it then. The spent fuel cells get passed down this belt here, goes all the way back in here. And they're passed into the centrifuge here, which will turn them back into uh, a little bit of uranium-238, which then gets passed down here, recycled through the system, and again made into more uh, more fuel cells. So it, it's um, not quite a closed loop, but it's uh, because you, you still need an input of uh, 235 and 238 and iron to keep it all running. But basically, it's it, it should just keep ticking over. Um, and as long as I'm producing enough of the... Um, the various types of uranium it should all keep ticking over quite happily and and just work now these um, centrifuges aren't running flat out which is because there isn't enough uranium ore coming out of here which is a bit of a shame uh, but at the moment it does seem to be producing just about enough of it uh, of both the uh, 235 and the 238 with the um, that things are generally running um, I've got ammunition coming out here still so that's okay I don't feel like I've got an enormous amount of the 235, so I'm not sure whether I'm really ready to start build, building nuclear bombs yet. Uh, I think I'm going to need to have another another train coming in, bringing in the uranium to drop it off here somehow, somewhere. I probably should have put all of this a bit higher up, but uh, never mind. I'll squeeze it in somewhere, that's not going to be a problem. I can, Especially as I can start removing these walls and turrets and things now, and probably actually can start removing all of the solar panels, because they're not needed because I've got so much power being produced by the by the nuclear. Okay, and it all glows very prettily as well because it's very, very hot. Okay, so that's uh, nuclear power. I'm going to... Uh, I thought I'd just show you that while it was just do, doing the initial warm-up and, uh, and getting going. And there's, oh, there's a little bit being used here. So now let's nip over and turn on the... Um... Oh, I was going to put radar in here as well, wasn't I? Let's do that before I forget. That's why I came over here. Is that about the right area? Yeah, that'll do. Okay, let's go over and have a look at those heavy power consuming devices on the over on the other side of the base and turn them on and and then we can have another look at the power consumption and see how it's going. <laughs> I should probably run a railway line up here as well, so that my trains can take me to the part of the base that I actually want to go to, rather than dropping me off at the sort of the restocking station down there, and then leaving me somewhat stranded. Right, let's just turn this on now. Click. 
Now, if we have a look at the power consumption over the last minute, there's been a massive, massive spike there from that. That was from the umbrella device coming online. Um, the drill isn't using the core mining drill isn't using quite as much power as I was expecting. Although that is still steadily rising, which is interesting. Um, I'm not sure why it's going up and up. But let's put down a couple more of those. Uh, why is that not building? It hasn't got any drills. Okay, let's give it some drills. I think I've got some of them in my inventory somewhere. Yes, here we go. So I reckon three or three or four of these is going to be a good number. Because the, um, product, the um, mining speed or the mining effectivity or the mining something or other goes down the more of them you have. I don't know how I'm going to feed this and I think I'm probably going to have to direct insert into pulverizers. So my next step is definitely going to be to build up some pulverizers to to put right next to this. I mean there's no reason that this has to be specifically right here. I may well move that across, uh, move that out somewhere else where it's a bit more where I can link it up to the railway system a bit more easily. It was mostly put in there as a sort of a hey let's see how this works. In fact, let's demolish that. And now I'm going to go off and uh, build this up somewhere else. So, I'll um call it an episode for now and I'll show you a bit more about that in the next one. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.